today's video, we're going to take a look at the Little Kala 21700 5000 mAh battery. We're going to do a bunch of tests and fit it up against the Tesla 21700 cell and a bunch of other ones. So it'll be interesting to see how well it does against those. The cell is made in China, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs. We'll take it apart, take a look at the construction. We'll do a short circuit test to see if it has internal safeties. And then we'll build a battery pack out of it to see if it works well for that. There hasn't been very many advances in battery technology since my review from 2015 of the LG 3500 mAh cell. But these new 21700s are pretty interesting, so I want to take a look at this 5000 mAh $3 cell. That's pretty cheap, so if we can build battery packs out of this, it's going to be awesome bang for the buck. Here are the specifications for it. It's 5000 mAh, it can push 10 amps max should have an internal resistance of less than 20 milliohms. It's a typical 2.5 volt cutoff. Standard charge rate at 2.5 amps. It's a standard cell that operates from zero to 50 degrees Celsius. If you need a low temperature one, they've got those as well. For this review, we're gonna take a look at these six different items, starting off with a low current capacity test at 0.5 amps. Our test configuration has thick copper buses. It's calibrated with a fluke meter and uses the AccuCell 8150 with LogView and Windows to log all the data. So after running the test, the little catalog gave us 5,067 milliamp hours. That's pretty impressive as it breaks the 5,000 milliamp hour mark and it's better than all the other 21700 cells I've tested. You can pause here if you want to take a look at how it compares to the 18650s and the 18350 as well. Here's the little catalog's discharge curve isolated so you can take a look at how well it does. Here's the bar graph to compare it to the Tesla 4800 milliamp hour, LG 5000 milliamp hour, and as you can see, it sits out on top just by 5%. It's not leading by a lot, but it's still pretty impressive because it'll give you that extra mileage for your EVs or e-scooters. And when comparing batteries, it's not only important to look at the capacity, you have to look at the total energy of the battery because that's how much work you can do. So compare watt hours, not milliamp hours. Energy is the true benchmark of a battery. And the little Kala got 12.1 watt hours. Let's put the percentages on a bar graph and you can see that it's 2% more. So it's not a huge amount, but it'll give you a 2% boost if you're using only 0.5 amps compared to the Tesla cell. There's a bigger increase when you use 5 amps, but I'll show you that later after this testing. Now we'll take a look at the high current test at 5 amps. The little Kala sits out on top with 4,906 milliamp hours delivered. So you can see here in all my testing of various cells, it sits second from the top, only bested by the 26650 by Panasonic. Now I'll isolate some of the graphs so we can take a closer look at them. Here's it compared to the Panasonic. Panasonic beats it by 261 milliamp hours. And the little Kala actually beats it for voltage, but then towards the tail end, the Panasonic beats it. It's a bigger cell, so that's expected. In this graph, we only show the 21700s, and you can see the little Kala sits at the top at 4906 milliamp hours. Beside the LG, which gets 4644, Here's it sitting beside the Tesla cell, 4653. And then here's it compared to 4,000 milliamp hour cells, which get less than 4,000. In comparison of the capacities, it gets 5% more than Tesla cell. And then if you look at the energy, it gets 10.6 watt hours. And if you compare that, then you can see it gets 6% more work done. So watt hours is the way to look at it. So if you take a Model 3, it gets 584 using their cells. If you use the little Kala cell, you get 6% more which gives you 621 kilometers, which gives you an additional 37 kilometers or 23 miles. So 6% doesn't seem like a lot, but in this real world example, you can drive across an entire city, no problem with 37 kilometers of additional range. Now we'll take a look at the internal resistance of the cells. Three of them were 26 and one of them was 27, which is expected of a high capacity cell. For the short circuit test, we're gonna use these thick conductors. We're just gonna to touch it together and see if it burns out the internal fuse or the battery is going to go into thermal runaway and basically explode. Make sure you don't try this at home, as it's very dangerous. It's just a quick spark, but after that spark, the fuse is gone, and we were only seeing 0.7 volts. So these are well-built cells with a good safety measure built in in case you get a short. It doesn't go into thermal runaway. It just open circuit and saves you from any fires or any thermal runaways. So it's a very well-built cell and has its safeties built in. So definitely do not try that at home. Now let's unwrap the cell and see what's underneath it. This is the shorted out cell, so it doesn't matter if we short the positive and negative. The top ring is loose, which is indicative of an original build. So this is the first cell not repackaged by Little Kala. So if this was taped on, then that's a repackaged cell. That's not good. The top insulator looks pretty good, nice and thick. 
and then the crimp looks pretty high quality. You can see it there. There are absolutely no engravings on it, so it's an original cell that was created and then packaged by Little Kala. So I'd say they made a pretty good quality cell. I'm not sure about the longevity, but the construction seems pretty good. There's no corrosion on it or anything. So let's do a quick recap. Let's take a look at some pros. Obviously it's true capacity with 5,000 milliamp hours. All four of my cells were consistent and the price of the cells was amazing at $4 a piece or $3 a piece if you order more. One con I found was that they were a little bit too big. Here are the dimensions and weight. The Little Kala is 0.3 millimeters bigger. The Little Kala is a little bit bigger than the standard 21700. That's why it doesn't fit into the convoy, whereas the Tesla cell fits in both. So they made the convoy a little bit too tight, but I think it's more the cell is on the larger side. So keep that in mind. And I'd say that this is just a medium powered cell, not high powered. The max continuous is only rated at 10 amps or 15 amps peak. And so if you only have 10 amps, you're only going to get 1,443 watts in a 13S pack, or it's capable of just over 2,000 watts peak. So it's not for hyper scooters, but it's probably fine for regular scooters. If you're using two cells in a battery pack, then it should be good for up to 74 watts, which is what I'll be using it for. Another con I'd say would be the brand's QAQC. But if you do order these cells, make sure you order it from the official Little Catalyst store. The other ones sell you clones and fakes. I'll leave a link in the description to the actual store. The reason I say it has QAQC problems is because I ordered their 18650s and out of 10 cells in a battery pack, the same battery pack, one of them dropped a lot of capacity after 3.25 years of usage. As you can see here, number 20 dropped quite a bit and in comparison to the rest, nothing came even close. If you take a look at the percentages, it dropped to 66% of its initial capacity. The other ones were just 87 to 91%. So it's good quality cells, it's just one of them has an issue. It may not affect this 21700 because there could be multiple manufacturers and you can't blame one manufacturer for the other one's cell quality. My speculation is that there could be multiple manufacturers like these three here, DLG, Group Power, EVE, and they're all in the Guangdong province, I think. The cells say they're made in China, so they're all probably being manufactured in those various cities. And I've recently went there to check it out and I had a great time. They have a lot of electric scooters, electric bikes are going around, electric buses, vehicles. So I think they produce a lot of good quality lithium ion cells. I think Little Catala is repackaging a lot of those cells and selling them at a good price. So we can benefit from that. Electric buses. They can go 300 kilometers per hour max. We're going 306. We're going beyond the max. Given there's a 1.3% variance, then it's within tolerance. There you go, there you go. I traveled on the train a lot, saw a lot of plants and stuff. I wonder if I went by the plant that creates the lithium ion cells that I'm testing now. Could be. This could be it right there. So do you think this is the best budget-friendly battery? After all this testing, I definitely believe it is. So I'd recommend this cell. It's a great cell for low budget builds, medium power, or high capacity builds. Any flashlights less than 37 watts, USB battery packs, or any other battery packs you gotta build, it's definitely a good cell for that. I tested my two cell pack, and I got a nice boost of 45% above my other packs that use 18650 cells. For a slightly larger cell, that's a pretty good return. This is a pretty cool battery pack. It has two 21700s in there and two built-in cables for an iPhone and a USB-C. So that's pretty cool. It's 10,000 milliamp hours in there. I'm pretty happy with those cells. It has great potential in battery packs, flashlights, e-scooters, and whatever you want to make. Even vacuum cleaner replacement cells. So in conclusion, they're definitely high quality cells from what I can tell. I highly recommend them for any of your lithium ion storage needs. Thank you to all my subscribers. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to support my channel, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps.